In this video, I'm going to explain how we can use AI language models to take a template document in PowerPoint or Word, like this simplified project proposal, and automatically fill in all of this content so that we end up with a dynamically generated document like this one. And so where we get all this information is that we are going to be pulling from our CRM any materials, any information we have about this particular sales case, and then we are passing those into the language model to generate all these various sections that we want uh, in our proposal. Additionally, we are going to be pulling from another database where we have our past reference cases, as well as some testimonials. And again, there the language model is going to help us make an intelligent search against that database so that we can retrieve the testimonials and the cases uh, that are the most relevant to this proposal that we are now creating. So to show you in more detail what that looks like, this proposal is created for Efficient Operations, a fictional company for a project about automating report and document creation using AI. And the data we have for this company in HubSpot, acting as our CRM, although it could be any source that you have this kind of information. Here we have some emails, some email interactions with this prospect uh, discussing this potential project, as well as a transcript from a sales call where we discuss it in even more detail and there's quite a lot of material here that we can use. And the last data point here that we're going to use in the proposal is this frame agreement hourly rate, which is going to allow us to also calculate the cost estimate in our proposal. And then we also have this database where we have our past cases, the short summary, as well as the testimonials where we have the company, the contact person, as well as a reference to an image that we can then also substitute in our proposal as you saw earlier. And so with that being our data, the way this all works under the hood, and I'm not going to go into much detail here on the code, I'll, I'll be making a more detailed tutorial about this later, uh, but for now I'll just cover the very basics of how this works. And so here we're just going to be pulling our data, our content from HubSpot using the HubSpot API. And then using these quite elaborate prompts, we are going to be telling the language model exactly with examples uh, what kinds of sections we want in our proposal. So this is what our project tagline should look like. This is what a problem statement should look like. And then we pass in the efficient operations context so that the language model can generate these same sections for that, for that particular company and that particular project so that we end up with uh, these sections here. And then we have a second prompt for extracting the project steps. So this is the timeline we have in the proposal for the project. Again, a decent amount of instructions and examples of how they should look like. And that way we can create our table here with this information based on this section in our call transcript here, where we indeed talk about these stages uh, of the project. And so then given our instructions here, the language model can extract that in the correct format, and then we can put it all into the table. And then finally, we have one more prompt for doing the retrieval. And this is where we ask the language model to give us a couple of search keywords that describe this project, something along these lines. And then these keywords we can use for running the search against our database where we have our testimonials and cases. And again, this is what allows us to get the testimonials and get the reference cases that are the most relevant to this efficient operations uh, context. So in a nutshell, that's how we are using language models to drive this whole process. And then finally, we just have this JavaScript component in our program as well. And again, I won't go into much detail here other than to say that we are using this library called docx templator, which allows us to do exactly this kind of stuff, defining and replacing these placeholder values in our documents as we have done here in our template. So these curly braces all define uh, these dynamic variables that we are going to, we can replace uh, using this library. As stated, it works with PowerPoint, Word, Excel. You can also have Excel charts in PowerPoints. Um, as you saw, you can create tables with a dynamic number of rows. You can substitute images, uh, do styling with HTML links. So a lot of stuff you can do with this library. And so that's why after we do the language model extraction here in these files, uh, then this 
JavaScript component is where we do the actual document manipulation, putting in those extracted values into our template and rendering that as a new document. So that's basically how this all works from a technical point of view. Now, before I finish up this video, there's one more thing I want to briefly touch on, which is the fact that, of course, these language models aren't perfectly reliable. And even more importantly, our data is typically not perfectly reliable. So if we are going to do something like this, it's not guaranteed, for example, that we'll always have things like the hourly rates available somewhere uh, for automatically creating these proposals. Uh, which is fine we can still fill in all the other parts of the document with the data that we do have available uh, it just means that we'll probably in most cases want some kind of a human in the loop final review adding in missing data uh, to finalize the document uh, but to make that more efficient it's a good idea to give the user some indication on what data exactly is missing on which pages uh, etc and there's a variety of ways to do this, depending on what kind of uh, interface you have for this document creation, whether it's a Slack integration or some kind of a dedicated web app. But another simple way to do this, as we've done here, is to simply add this kind of a validation slide at the start of our document, which we can then later remove, where as part of generating the document, we are also using the language model to do some reasoning about how successful it is, evaluating if some of the required information is missing or partially missing, and adding those notes here to then help the user do the final review. Now, of course, here in this first idealized example, we didn't have such issues, it was all perfect. So to demonstrate this, we are going to jump back into our other prospect in HubSpot, which is this Nexus Retail, for which we have a similar setup, just a different subject matter. Here it's a retail company with who we are talking about a data platform and analytics project. Two emails, one call transcript. But notably, here we are missing the frame agreement hourly rates for this prospect. So now what we are going to do is we are going to rerun this process for that company. So we are changing this company name here to Nexus Retail to use that data instead. And now rerunning it. And here you can also see it doesn't take long at all to run. The GPT-4.0 model is really quite fast. And now if we open this newly created Nexus Retail presentation, we can now see that we do indeed have these uh, validation notes here on our first slide, stating that hourly rates not found in the context uh, are just on slide five. Uh, so it's only partially successful as we do have uh, the other details about the steps in place, uh, but the price will need to be filled in uh, manually. But otherwise, looking at the slides now, we now have the content filled in for this data platform and uh, analytics uh, project. And you can also see that the reference projects that have been retrieved are now more relevant to this retail customer. Uh, so we are talking about a retail case we've done, consumer goods, e-commerce. And here, of course, we can do any other additional adjusting as well to make the formatting a little nicer in places. Also here, we now have these two testimonials that are a bit more relevant. We have some marketing and inventory management that's been retrieved from our testimonials. And here maybe we'll want to shorten this a little bit, make this a bit more even. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. As I said before, I'll definitely be making a more in-depth code level tutorial about this topic uh, very soon. So stay tuned for that. In the meanwhile, if you think something like this could be useful or time-saving in your company, whether it's proposals or monthly reports, compliance, grant applications, anything of the sort, where you find yourself creating the same documents over and over again, I run a development studio and we help companies build exactly these kinds of uh, custom AI applications. So if that's interesting to you, there will be a link in the description to book a discovery call for free with myself. And with that, thank you for watching. I hope it was informative and I'll see you on the next one.